Hey, this is Abel with the Controls Freak. I uh, wanted to make a quick video because I've actually been out in the field a little bit uh, this past week. Um, and honestly, I've seen some things in the field that pull me back to the days of when I was a greenhorn. And I want to see if I can help some of you guys that are looking to getting into controls. I'm getting a lot of emails from you guys saying that you're doing residential AC or you're working in a totally unrelated field and you're thinking about controls. And it's really, to me, the, the little things that counts, the attention to details. And one of those things is how to strip wire. Uh, everyone thinks they know how to do it from the days of when you're putting uh, subwoofers and amps in your car or maybe you were working with uh, adding an outlet in your house and you know from that point forward you said I, I know how to strip wire, I know how to connect stuff. Let's take a look, let's see how we do it right. Don't make these mistakes, don't be that guy twisting together all kinds of stuff and throwing uh, wire nuts all over the place. Let's take a look at uh, what we do with ComWire. Alright, so what we have here is uh, some low capacitance wire. Uh, we just call it orange wire since all of our wires we just try to use orange for communication. just want to go over some proper ways to cut this. Um, this is uh, actually looking at the uh, markings on here. I'm going to refresh my memory. Uh, it's low capacitance wire 24 gauge 2 conductor and it does come with a shield. So if you're going to go ahead and terminate this we're going to cut it here and you'll notice already that uh, it comes with uh, a pull string inside there. So usually what I'll do is I'll get the largest setting on my strippers which is going to be a 12 gauge stranded <laughs> and a 10 gauge solid and uh, just kind of barely nick it very light and then I just wiggle it and uh, as you get closer it'll open it up for you and it may not get all the way so sometimes when I have a little edge still there uh, open to it I'll get it with my uh, grips on the front side so I'm not nicking the wire I'm actually putting it in a non-cutting hole right here and I'm just going to pull it a little bit till it snaps open so that keeps it from scarring up the wire on the inside um, but it goes ahead and gets a whole good grip of the jacket and pulls that off so once I open this up I've actually got uh, the pull string and I've got a shielded conductor here which is right here with no jacket on it and it also has a foil uh, on it so usually when you first make this first cut uh, the foil gets nicked enough to where it sometimes comes off in this case it didn't so if I give it a little twist it'll start to unravel here probably pick the worst day to actually come and do a video outside we got wind and uh, airplanes going overhead uh, once I pull this back here I'll give the actual conductors a little extra pull and what that does is it pulls out the, the jacket a little bit further back. That way I can pull the foil back a little bit further. And what I'll do is you don't have to actually cut this. You can actually just put the blade right up against it and give it a little pull. And usually it'll just pop off. And what that does is even if there's a little bit of extra foil still sticking out, because I pulled it back, what I'll do is then I'll just kind of like squeeze and push forward. And that just puts the jacket back over where I cut the foil so it's nice and clean. Um, I also do that if I'm not going to use this string, if I'm ready to terminate, I'll also do that with the string. Is I'll pull this back, pull the string out a little bit, give it a good cut, get rid of that, and then go ahead and push that jacket back forward. And that covers up, makes it nice and clean. So now all I see is my two conductors and this shield here. I'm going to go ahead and do that with the next one as well. Just give it a little nick. Bend it back and forth as it opens up. Just give it a pull. And then we'll pull the jacket back just a little bit. I'll get the pull string and the foil in one swoop. Now I've got uh, both ends of these here. Oh, I forgot to push that forward. Now what I've done there is uh, I've avoided trying to nick any of these conductors. You never want to have any nicks there. If you make one little nick on the edge there, it's very easy that if you did it across both, they're going to touch inside that jacket when they move around or you're re-terminating the wires and so forth. Um, so what I've done is avoid all that by cutting it that way. And it also looks nice and clean, as you can see here. And now all i got to do is uh, just strip the ends. Another thing that some people do a little incorrect is um, they leave like a huge long strip um, and this probably is the longest I'd probably want to have it at this point right here. Um, I'd give it, I guess that's about maybe a, a quarter of an inch or so, maybe less. 
And that's really that's all that's needed for most uh, little terminals that you're going to be wiring this stuff to. The one thing you don't want to do is have it super long. At the same time, don't make it super short. Otherwise, whatever terminal you're going to put it in is not going to be able to crimp down onto it uh, properly. Now, once I've done that, um, if I'm putting this into a terminal block, one of the things that electricians and other people that work with wires, they have different ways of looking at it. With stranded wire, I say the rule is you need to twist it first. So if you're going to put this in a wire nut or you're going to put it in a terminal, best thing to do is if it's stranded wire, go ahead and twist it yourself outside of the connector, then put it inside the connector and then it holds really well. Uh, if you're used to listening to electricians, they'll always tell you, you put the two wires together and then shove them into the wire nut like so. So if you have them together here, you just push, push it inside the wire nut. I say not to do that with stranded because it doesn't always work on stranded. With solid copper, which is what electricians always work with, that works great. Grab two solid copper conductors side by side like that, shove a wire nut on there, and start wrenching it down. works perfect. But you don't want to do that uh, with stranded. You always want to go ahead and twist them first. So Control Freak says twist them first. Tell anyone that asks you. Um, after that, you've got your uh, shield still hanging out here. And what I do with this is I like to match these up. This one's a little twisted here. And if you're wondering why that came out, it's because I've got a little shorty that I'm playing with for this video here. So essentially what I'll do is on the shields, I'll pull them together and I'll start to twist them right at the jacket. Right at the jacket, go ahead and just start twisting it from there and, and nice and tight. Uh, this isn't such a good job just because of the fact that uh, I'm working with such a short little uh, strand of, of wire cable here but uh, I go ahead and I twist it back and if you made a long cut here if you have a really long shield I usually try to cut it back so as you can see here I've, I've really ended the twists right there and this is just one end so I'll go ahead and just stop there and then I'll cut it off and yes these have seen some use so they're not as uh, sharp as they used to be <laughs> it's being stubborn Alright, so after I've gotten a twist on this here, then what you want to do is, is wrap it around the orange jacket. So we'll wrap it around the orange jacket. And the next thing, very important, is to add electrical tape. So now that we've stripped that wire, the next thing to do is we're going to tape it up. And if I ever see you actually use duct tape on this stuff, I swear, use electrical tape. You know what, I don't even care if you get the 99 cent special, 89 cents, whatever the cheapy rolls are, that's okay. Point is, use electrical tape. If you want to spend the money, buy the good stuff, the 3M Super 8899, whatever it is. Um, but use electrical tape, no doubt, especially on comm wire. So on, uh, on our last uh, strip, we uh, went ahead and twisted up the shields, and that's where it's important. That shield's just a bare conductor. If you just wrap it back and leave it there, it's bound to uncoil, unravel, and touch across conductors. So let's make sure that we get that wrapped up and uh, not touch anything. This is how we do it. All right, so we've got the uh, wire that we stripped earlier right here, and it's pretty much we're going to wrap this shield, uh, going to wrap the shield around the orange jacket. Try not to grab the actual conductors here. You want to go ahead and grab around the orange jacket. Now, I've rotated it one particular direction to where the end, sorry, the end is right here on the jacket. And what I want to do is get my tape, and let's talk about tape for a second. You know what? I hate it when guys grab electrical tape and they do like this. Oh, I'm gonna grab this piece right here. Eh, pow. Oh, sweet, that's what I get to work with. No, that's not the way to do it. Best way, look, look at what the mess you make. No, that's not the way you work with electrical tape. This is what you do with electrical tape. Go ahead and peel some back, grab it right here with your fingers, and if this is the, the amount that you want to take right here, go ahead and put your fingers together, and when you do the snap, do it quickly, and look at that edge. Look at that, that's sweet. And now when you wrap it, it's not gonna kink up. When you stretch it out, it's not gonna go back to curling up or whatever. It's gonna make you a nice clean uh, uh, taping in there, and it won't come off as easily as uh, the other junk. So let me do this one more time here. You don't have to get too excessive. I mean, literally about maybe an inch is all you would need to wrap around these two wires here. So I'm just gonna grab that, do a quick snap. And then this end here, the crappy looking end out of the tear, I'm gonna go ahead and lay it kind of like you do uh, plumber's tape. If you ever worked with uh, putting plumber's uh, 
tape on there. You want to go with the threads. So in this case here, I'm going to roll it with the end of the wire. And the other little trick is, is to make sure that not only do you cover the uh, whatever juncture you're trying to hide, you got to go over the jacket. Okay, so if you notice in this here, I've got the jacket in the middle of the tape. Okay, don't do it to where you've got the tape like right at the edge of the jacket. All that's going to do is this is going to get a little loose. That jacket's going to start to come out. That's not what you want. So what you want to do is place that where it's like halfway covering up the jacket as well as the conductors. And then go ahead and make sure that that uh, shield is laid back nice and tight. And I'll put some pressure on it hold it on one end, give it a good tug stretch, bring it around to the other side, and usually you can make about maybe two wraps on there, and that's that's really all you need to do. If you got the roll with you, you can go ahead and tear it after you come around the second time or whatever. I already kind of pre-pulled out, so I'm making about three wraps on that baby. And essentially what you're gonna have is something that looks kind of like that. Now that looks a lot cleaner. You don't see any other little miscellaneous conductors, you don't see any little uh, pull string or anything sticking out that's a nice clean junction keeps the uh, the uh, shield here from touching any other circuits or anything like that that's a good setup right there good job so that's pretty much uh, how I usually strip com wire uh, hopefully that helps uh, definitely it's gonna make your uh, installations look a little bit more professional uh, not looking like the next guy that guy don't be that guy uh, guys don't forget to thumbs up the videos it helps out a lot Check out the blog, uh, thecontrolsfreak.com. Leave your comments. Let me know what you think. If you got any other tips or tricks up your sleeve, uh, share it with everyone else and uh, see if we all can't be, uh, become better controls freak. Uh, until the next video, this is Abel. I'm out.